this is uh, the top curve there is the typical weight loss trial where you put somebody on uh, 12 to 1400 calories a day for six months or three months or something like that and they lose some weight they gain it back they've gained almost all of it back by the five this is the average right by the five year mark and then they continue to, to gain weight beyond the baseline this is what science says about caloric restricted diet this is my own weight history and by the way the units here are percentage of uh, I couldn't get the units to line up on my PowerPoint program. This is the percent of total peak body weight that was lost. So typically people lose not more than about 10% of peak body weight. And uh, I lost, I think, 17% of peak body weight. That's a 10-year curve here for me. I did start gaining weight back after about five years, and I've gained uh, part of that weight back. But um, I used to weigh 25 pounds heavier than I did. Ten years ago, I was 25 pounds heavier than I am now. So. Uh, the, um, uh, okay, uh, next slide. Um, here, this is, this is the milieu we're working in, and this is just obvious, this, this is, it goes in your mind. It's just obvious, it's calories in, calories out. That's the whole thing. And you feel really, really intelligent, like you really mastered arithmetic in the sixth grade, you know? Calories in minus calories out equals stored fat, right? It just seems so obvious, and it's not true. Okay. It's true in some sense. It's true in some sense, right? And I'll describe the nuances of that. But it isn't that true, and it isn't that simple, and I'll explain uh, how and, and why that is. But what that does, if you believe in the calories in, calories out theory, which is based on ignorance of science, right, that you will conclude that the whole issue of obesity has to do with willpower over gluttony minus willpower over laziness equals perfect figure, perfect health. Okay. And then, or gluttony plus sloth equals obesity. Right. And then now you get to be moral superior and judge the sinner over there who's fat because of their own sins. Right. Okay. Okay, ring, ring a bell here. Uh, you know, that's, this is the subtext. When you say, oh, it's calories in, calories out, right? Um, and uh, so therefore, eat less and exercise more, and uh, that will restore a perfect figure and perfect health. And uh, the only problem with that that looks very good, it's very logical, it it's contradicts all the studies. Right? All the studies show that if you eat less, you gain more weight than if you didn't eat less. If you do a diet where you restrict your calories, you get rebound weight gain, and uh, they have trials, I'll show you the, the pattern there. They'll, take, they'll sign up 1,000 people for a weight loss trial, and they'll match them for body mass index, and they'll have half of them, they'll tell them, oh, the trial's been delayed, you can't start yet. Right? And they'll delay them as long as they can. It's hard to delay them more than a year. But then they'll start the other one on the weight loss diet. And then they'll look at everybody a year later, and the people, same body mass index, Right, same, all the same risk factors. The people who went on the diet gained more weight than the people who didn't go on the diet. That's what science says. So that doesn't say eat less and exercise more, does it? It doesn't support that, right? So what we get on top of this, this thing is based on ignorance, right? And there's this whole cascade of judgment and condemnation and self-blame and self-hatred and uh, judgment of other people and all of that stuff. You know what they call that in Hindu spirituality? Maya. Right? That's illusion built on ignorance. It has, does not have anything to do with reality. So I'm going to, well, it has a little bit to do or we wouldn't fall for it, but it is not reality. It's not the reality of what's going on. So I hope in the 90 minutes I'll give you a therapeutic approach, right, that where somebody can uh, c uh, correct their diabetes and maybe lose some weight. And, but I'd, I really would like you to right now say, I'm willing to let my opinions evolve right now over the next 90 minutes. Okay, because I'll have a lot of information that you never read in the newspaper, but if you looked in the scientific journals, you'd find it there. Okay, uh, next slide. Um, it has to do with uh, metabolism and obesity. Uh, you know, metabolism and the endocrine system have a lot to do with this. You know, the endocrine system, this is like our glands. Uh, the endocrine organs secrete hormones and they bind to target tissues and they have different uh, feedback effects and so on. So this is a quiz. This is a quiz. What metabolic, what endocrine organ regulates 
appetite and basic metabolic rate. See, so appetite is, is, is calories in, and metabolic rate is calories burned. You know, more, more are burned by metabolic rate than are burned by exercise, right? So this should have something to do with our equation. What gland, I mean, what uh, endocrine organ regulates those? It secretes a hormone that's detected by the hypothalamus. It secretes a hormone that's detected by the pancreas. It has receptors for adrenaline. It has receptors for insulin. It has receptors for glucagon. It has receptors for growth hormone. It can secrete systemic pro-inflammatory cytokines, and it also can, through endocrine effects, increase fat burning. What's the endocrine organ? That's called white adipose tissue. Your fat cells, your fat cells are not empty storage tanks. They're an endocrine organ. Right? So if there's an endocrine dysfunction in the fat cells, they end up storing a lot of stuff, right? And this would be like your thyroid becoming hypertrophic or some other endocrine system, some other endocrine organ becoming distorted, right? So the, that's, this is the most important thing. That doesn't sound like a storage tank, does it? It's not just an empty grain silo that you can fill up with oil.